So far, we've talked about the innate immune system, or innate immunity, covering things like complement or phagocytes that have receptors on their surface that recognize pathogens, cytokines being released and inducing inflammation. So the innate immune system is good. It can recognize pathogens via complement or LPS or mannose or other characteristics, and it can attack those pathogens via uh, the complement effector mechanisms, or phagocytosis. So the innate immune system, it's good, but it's not great. Um, what's good about it is that it's fast. It works uh, within minutes to hours to days of becoming infected. So complement can be activated very quickly. Uh, phagocytes can be activated very quickly. Um, the problem with the innate immune response and all the weapons that are covered in innate immunity like phagocytes, neutrophils, and macrophages, complement, cytokines, and inflammation, is that these are not specific, very specific to pathogens. Um, if an immune cell recognizes LPS, that's great. But um, there are specific molecules on the surface of pathogens, which if they were recognized, would uh, be better to attack the pathogen. So the innate immune system, not specific. Um, it doesn't improve over time. It doesn't evolve. It doesn't change. Uh, it attacks, and then it goes away. And if it can't attack, it doesn't get any better. Uh, so it's limited in its ability to recognize pathogens and um, remove pathogens. If you only had an innate immune system, which some people do because they lack acquired immunity due to genetic defects, um, you would be... Uh, susceptible to many pathogens. There are many pathogens that the innate immune system uh, just cannot clear on its own. So that brings us to the second arm of the immune system called adaptive immunity or acquired immunity. So those terms are used interchangeably. Um, so in the adaptive or acquired immune system, there are two main arms of that system. There's humoral immunity, which is what this uh, unit is going to cover, and simply put, humoral immunity involves B cells recognizing pathogens and releasing antibodies to combat the pathogens, and that's what we're going to focus on in this unit. And the other um, arm of acquired or adaptive immunity, which we'll focus on in the next unit, is what's called cell-mediated immunity, and that is simply put, uh, T cells recognizing a pathogen and either killing cells that are infected by the pathogen or releasing cytokines to help um, provoke an immune response. So the thing about acquired or adaptive immunity, it's actually pretty slow. It only it takes about a week or two, sometimes to gear up initially after exposure to pathogen. So when you're exposed to a pathogen, the first line of defenses are the innate immune defenses. While that's happening, your acquired or adaptive immune defenses are recognizing a pathogen, but taking uh, their time to go through a number of processes in order to develop a really specific attack for each pathogen. So they're specific to a pathogen. Um, so they evolve and adapt to each pathogen, and they're very specific to each pathogen, and they improve over time. And in fact, you get lifelong protection if you survive the infection, B cells and T cells will typically give you memory uh, cells that will protect you for the rest of your life from that pathogen. So, let's talk about humoral immunity. Um, humoral uh, refers to your humors, an old-fashioned term for your fluids, your body fluids. Um, what are your humors? Your humors are any of your extracellular fluids, so things like your blood, are called humors, your lymph, your interstitial fluid, again, outside the liquid outside of your cells. So with the blood, it would be the plasma, um, things like your tears and saliva, milk would technically be considered um, humor, if anyone, again, one of your fluids. Um, I've got fetus here. Well, we're going to see that the humoral immune system actually can protect the fetus as well. That's external, technically, of the body. Um, well, depends how you look at it, but uh, the uh, humoral immune system is going to be able to send antibodies across the placenta into the um, fetus's bloodstream. So uh, 
the human immune system recognizes and attacks pathogens that are in your humors or your extracellular fluid. So if a pathogen is in your lymphatic system, in the lymph, uh, um, lymph, lymph fluid, or if it's in your interstitial fluid, um, the B cells will recognize, hopefully, a pathogen and then unleash an attack in there. So humoral immunity is not attacking anything inside a cell. Um, a virus could be inside the cell, but antibodies uh, typically aren't going to go in there. Antibodies are going to stay on the outside of a cell and attack anything that's found in your um, extracellular fluids. So, the main cell of humoral immunity is the B lymphocyte. We're just going to shorten that by saying B cell. And we're going to go through, um, in the unit, all the stages of the life cycle of a B cell. And uh, B cells begin their uh, lives in the bone marrow. So you have division of the pluripotent stem cells, which will differentiate into B cells. And we're going to spend some time in a later chapter in the bone marrow to talk about B cell development. So B cells go through a number of stages. Pre-B cells, they become pro-B cells, and they then become immature B cells. And so there's a process that occurs in the bone marrow uh, called the somatic recombination or VDJ recombination and this is going to be an extremely complicated and important process by which B cells develop their antigen receptors. So we'll go into great detail into VDJ recombination. Um, but for now, we'll just talk about B cells developing in the bone marrow, and once they've been successful in developing, they'll enter the bloodstream, right? And so when a B cell enters the bloodstream, is that where it does its job? Actually, no. B cells are lymphocytes, which means they're going to go into the lymphatic system, specifically lymphatic tissue. So B cells will enter the bloodstream just for the purposes of traveling around the body, and look for lymphatic tissue. So they'll leave the blood and enter lymph nodes, the lymphatic tissues such as the BALT, bronchial associated lymphatic tissue, the GALT, the gastrointestinal associated lymphatic tissue, the MALT, the mucosal associated lymphatic tissue. So B cells, uh, which are lymphocytes, enter the lymphatic tissue and that's where they're going to look for and try to recognize pathogens. If they're uh, in the lymphatic system, they have matured to a point where we should call them naive B cells. And so there are B cells circulating your body right now, going from the blood to the lymph nodes, and then back to the blood, um, looking for pathogens. So their job is recognition of pathogens. If you are not infected, the B cells will leave the lymphatic system. They'll travel through the lymph ducts in the lymph fluid, Eventually, lymph fluid merges back into the circulatory system, and the B cells enter the blood again, and then they'll travel around the body and try a different lymph node. And that's what B cells spend their time doing, traveling between blood and lymph, looking to recognize pathogens. If there's a pathogen, and let's say there's a pathogen being drained into the lymphatic vessel here, the pathogens are going to be brought to lymph, lymphatic tissues, such as lymph nodes. So we drain pathogens into the lymph nodes, and that's where B cells will check to see if they recognize the pathogen. Hopefully, one of your B cells will recognize it, and that B cell will become an activated B cell. So B cells will go from being naive, not recognizing anything, to becoming active, because they've recognized the pathogen. And once B cells become active, they're going to differentiate or turn into cells called plasma cells, and those cells release antibodies, which will attack the pathogen. Uh, B cells can also differentiate into memory cells, which will provide lifelong protection against the pathogen. So this is just an introduction to the fact that B cells are going to go through many stages of their life cycle, and we're going to have to learn about all the different stages and what goes on in them. Um, we're going to learn that B cells secrete antibodies. So we can talk a little bit about what antibodies are now. Uh, antibodies are these protein complexes that will attach to something else, such as a pathogen. So that B cell there might make an antibody that recognizes that virus. Another B cell might recognize this bacteria and make antibodies against the bacteria. 
So I just want to briefly go over antibody effector functions. What good are antibodies? How do they help us survive an infection? So we'll go into more detail into these when we talk about the specific antibodies later. But I'll just give you a rundown of the purpose of antibodies, the function of them. So one is neutralization. When a pathogen, such as a virus or a bacteria, is covered in antibodies, that can block the attachment of pathogens to uh, human cells. And if pathogens can't attach to human cells, such as viruses, they won't be able to get in and infect our cells, or they can be flushed out of things like the gastrointestinal system or the respiratory system. So you've effectively neutralized the infection. You've prevented the pathogen from taking hold of uh, the body. And it can be removed and cleared much better. Uh, opsonization is a concept we talked about when we talked about complement, covering something in a molecule that makes it more attractive to phagocytes. So we're going to learn that macrophages, uh, sure they'll phagocytose viruses and bacteria, but they do it even more effectively and efficiently if the pathogens are covered in antibodies. So we'll learn about that mechanism later. Uh, complement activation. You learned uh, a few videos ago about the classical pathway of complement activation. If the pathogen is covered in antibodies, specifically two types, IgM and IgG, that can attract um, and activate the classical pathway of complement activation. Um, providing protection in various parts of the body that uh, don't have access to complement, for example. So antibodies are secreted into uh, fluids such as milk or mucus, tears, sweat, saliva. Um, so providing protection to places in the body that uh, might not have access to other immune defenses. Uh, and lastly, antibodies are going to help other immune cells activate and attack the pathogen. So we'll learn about mast cells and basophils and NK, natural killer cells. If a pathogen is covered in antibodies, these things will help destroy the pathogen. So that's just a brief introduction of the humoral immune system, or humoral immunity, and we're going to go in great detail into everything we've talked about in this video.